So we, as people born into the internet age, are lacking real interpersonal connection. Most of us don't enjoy interacting face to face anymore, and honestly, we'd much rather just text each other. The best way to combat this is to live in intentional community. That is, community where you choose to put others above yourself, regardless of who or what they might be. Sadly, this notion has become less and less popular with the rise of social media. As we can see, if you look on Pinterest or any other major social media site, you'll see the feed of what today's youth are being fed every single day. It's an incessant, constant flow of self over others, and it truly is destroying our communities. To me, social media is a lot like lead. Lead enters your body, and your body recognizes it as calcium, which is a vital nutrient that it, your body likes to store up. So lead is stored up in your bones and other places in your body until it replaces all of the calcium, and then you die. Well, social media can do a very similar thing to your emotional state. Social media comes into your life masquerading as true community, yet it slowly and systematically replaces all of the true community you once had. This replacement can happen without any real, tangible effects that you notice until one day you're left without any real community and it's all been replaced by virtual connections that leave you unsatisfied. So another major um, stumbling block in getting into community, and this is kind of my problem, is I'm a major introvert, and I don't like to do life with people. So I used to think, like a lot of people, um, that having friends was like a little added bonus to my life. So I would get all my stuff together, get my work done, get my life perfect, and I was ready to go out and spend two hours with my friends. And then I'd come back into my little hole and avoid people for the rest of the time. But I've since realized how backwards and negative this is. I should have been searching out a true, accountable, interpersonal community that I could be a part of, regardless of whether I was totally put together and perfect or not. Now, this is partially my own fault, being someone who really enjoys being self-reliant, but I think that we can all relate to it in one way or another. Our culture is one of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and living for yourself, and this is toxic. So four years ago was when I kind of realized this and made this big transition in my life. Four years ago was the summer of my freshman year, and that's when I went to summer camp for the first time with three other guys that are now incredibly close friends. We all went together, um, and over the course of the week, we pranked the camp staff, um, had a huge soccer tournament with like 400 people, everybody that was in the camp, and just had tons of crazy hooligan adventures. And this is what really brought us together. This was my first glimpse into what real interpersonal connection could be like, and from that point on, I didn't want to let it go. So I'm hoping that today, can be your big transition point. I want you to say yes to community, yes to committing to other people, and yes to a better life. So then, what can you do? Forget passive community and embrace intentional community. Opportunities to connect with others are all around us. You just have to be willing to be the catalyst that actually connects people. For instance, many of us are in school, high school or college. This is such a difficult time for so many of us, yet, it could be made so much easier if each of us were willing to connect with people simply because they are valuable and worthy of our time and for no other reason. Community is such an important thing, and I think that it's something we can all benefit from. So, you say, David, awesome. I want to be in community. Is it all going to be peach trees and roses and perfect all the time? Sadly, no. So, community is hard, and that's where a lot of the value comes in, but I guarantee that you will have difficult times that you will encounter. So I've put together a little list of um, a few tips that you can apply in your life if you're in community and uh, things that you can work through and use. So the first is to be accountable. If you're in community and you have a real community, then it has to have a standard meeting time, an accountable meeting time, and it has to be expected that everybody in the community is gonna be there every single week or every other week or whenever you're meeting. And when someone isn't there, it's the responsibility of everyone else in the community to find out where that person was and what they were doing, if something's wrong. That's what makes it real. Also, if you're living in real community, then it's very important to have tangible connections with the people in your community outside of its normal context. So a coffee date, a walk, or whatever, creates strong, robust connections within the community that makes the whole community stronger. Finally, if you're in community, then there's gonna be people in it that you don't like. 
That's just the nature of community, and it's, it's part of what makes it so valuable and what grows maturity in you, um, but it's gonna create conflict. So the best way I've found to get through this is you just sit down with the person you have conflict with, find out everything you can about their side of the story, because chances are, if there's conflict, then there's misunderstanding. So this type of community, I've found is beautifully demonstrated in the Papuan students who are here um, living in America and studying at our universities. My brother got in contact with me um, a few months ago and told me that he wanted to organize a traditional Papuan celebration called Bakar Batu. This celebration is based around any sort of big event. Um, so Easter was coming up, so we chose to celebrate that. And you should know the Papua New Guinea government only sends 80 to 90 students to America to study here at our universities. And these students are from all over the nation of Papua and up at universities across the nation. So my brother began to pair, prepare for the event. He got together um, a bunch of leaves or ferns called wakaleka, which is just such a fun word to say, wakaleka. Um, we got tons of veggies to make and two whole pigs. So, as my brother was preparing for the event, he got more and more calls from Papuans from all over saying that they wanted to come, which was just insane because we had no advertising. There was no way to spread the word. Um, but soon, 70 out of the 85 Papuans that were in America were scheduled to come down to Shoals to have some weird tobacco tasting meat and veggies. So this is a group picture, obviously. Um, but the event came, it was a huge success, it was a fantastic experience for me and everybody, all the Papuans that were there. But the most striking thing to me was how these people interacted. Most of them didn't know each other beforehand, yet when they came together, there was no semblance of hesitation, clicks, or any sort of just, they wanted to be with each other simply because they had decided beforehand that they did. This is such an important lesson that I think we can all learn from, it was just, it was incredible to see another culture and how it's so standard for them and how it's so foreign to us. So what am I asking you to do? Get out into the world and connect with people. It's the smallest and biggest thing you can do. Thank you.